Yo, 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 check in, check in, Section 104, we live again. This time, we got the Section 104 podcast, where we take you beyond the sidelines into the heart of high school and youth sports. A few weeks ago, Chuck, we had the fan at Broward versus Dade All-Star game, which a lot of competition, a lot of hard hitting, fast playing, but now also we had it for the varsity. We also had the first annual eighth grade yeah. all-star game for the fan at, you know, Dade and Broward game. So what's your thoughts on that? First of all, I'm shout sorry. Shout out to Fan at first. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to my boy Fan it, man. All of his losses, shout man. Out all, man. My big bro, you already know. Yeah. But, you know, I want to ask you about the eighth game, eighth grade game first, where well, Broward came out victorious, 20 to 6. What you think about, what you thought about that game? Um. Yeah, man, that game, it actually, you know, Shout out to Broward, man. They won. They showed me something. I, I actually went with Dave, you know. Um, Young Kitchens, he went down early, which is unexpected, you know. I like him, you know. He plays for the Corey Boys, 13U. Right. You know, um, there's a lot of talent flying out there for the eighth grade, um, both for Dave and Broward, you know. You know, you got Marjorie. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. uh, Samaj Flowers, man, you know. Yeah. Had A1. A, yeah, A1's won. like that. Lauderdale Lakes. Lakes. Uh, Boonia. Yeah, shout you know out. Man, that jit is live, man. Jeffrey O'Neill Jr., man. He's yeah. only in the seventh grade. He'll be playing varsity in the eighth grade know, next year. If you don't know, look him up. Say the, say the name one time for him again. His child. name is Jeffrey O'Neill Jr., but he goes by Boonia. Yeah, he different. Yeah, he yeah. definitely is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he most definitely is. But uh, you said something earlier. You said uh, Kitchens went down earlier, and we know that's the quarterback for the Corey boys, Gwen Cherry, 13-U. Uh, so you saying if he stayed healthy in that game, he went down what, first quarter, I believe? It was first uh, second quarter, I believe. Second right? quarter. So if he stayed in that game, yeah, it was kind of like a tight game, 20-6. You know. I mean, they were also switching quarterbacks as well. Shout out to Russell Britton, um, quarterback for the Motion Boys, yeah. 13-U. So, you know. He did what he could do um, when he was out there, you know, just Broward, just they came to play. Eighth grade All-Stars, man. They just <laughs> they had a point to prove. Shout, shout out to them, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, moving forward, the game of the night where everybody came to see. Varsity. Yes, sir. We the got varsity game. The varsity, Dave versus Broward, man. You know, Dave took that one 35 to 21. For the second time in a row. Yeah, so now, you know, the record is 2-1, Dade way. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy because, you know, Brown was up 14 nothing. You know, we like to put the donut up, up there. Was, you know, it's just playing in the background, you know. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Section 104 <laughs> playing in the background. Dade went on 28 unanswered point run, man. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. That, that kid, uh, Fetty. You know Freddie's like that. Yeah. Claudio he, Sherman. Claudio Junior, Fetty shot, Sherman. Yeah, man. yeah, he different. Also Section known 105. as yeah, Section 105. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that boy, man. He uh to me, he an underdog. You know, he Definitely. undersized. People won't look at him, say he got the arm strength. But just go watch him play, and I think you'll have a different opinion about that kid. Uh, I can't say I can't say enough about him. I can't say enough about Coach Ice and their coaching staff over there, Booger T. They did a wonderful job, and you know. But that game, man, it, it just seemed like really Broward was outnumbered, outman, and they didn't have the athletes that they have. Not saying that Broward didn't don't have athletes, but in that game, it it most definitely showed what the athletes were. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you also got to shout out the general as well, as well um, Antonio Smith Jr. You yeah, know, he yeah. started the 28 on the answer points, you know, with the strike. With the one, and, and the, the wide receiver from High Live with the one hand. Yes, man. Um, hold on, we got to get that young man's I name. I think it, I know his nickname. His name is J Bo. Shout out to J Bo. Shout out to J Bo from High Live. Shout man. out to High Live football, my boy Coach Tone over there. You know, Coach Tone. That's hot. So, you know, we're going to go to, you know, our last basketball game that we cover, you know. Which, you know Section we 104 also do basketball. I'm sorry to cut you off, Chuck, but a <laughs> lot of people don't know. They think we're just a football-based, you know, entity, but we, we're not. We're sports. 
you know, that's track, baseball, uh, basketball. We're football. community. like we're Exactly, community, because we'll also come out and get your picnics, uh, your tailgates. So section 104, we're here for the community. But I'm sorry. You know, I digress. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, yeah, you know, so, you know, our last coverage, you know, is, you know, the Lady Bulldogs. You know, we've been following the Lady Bulldogs of South Broward, you know. We're in a rivalry matchup against MacArthur, you know. We went to MacArthur, you know. They showed us love at MacArthur, you know. How you feel about that game, G? Um, for a rivalry game, South Broward really handed them, like, had, you know, took care of them real easily. Um, yeah, the score was 63 to 44. Yeah, it, it wasn't even a contest. But uh, South Broward got some girls on that team that really can can ball, and I really think they have a chance to do something this year in the state. Uh, shout out to Fab. Uh, shout you know, out to Fab. You know she. That's Fabiana. Fabiana, man, she 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 real nice with the ball. She That's number find, three she for get South Broward. Shot. She can also drive to the hole. Uh, Jamisha Carr, Jamisha Mimi Carr. Yeah, like, she was actually the leading scorer of the game. Right. She had 19 points. 12 rebounds and two steals. So essentially she had uh, a double-double. Yeah. You know, you know who you was just talking about as well was Fab. She was the second leading scorer. You know, she had 18 points, 10 assists, four steals. She had a double-double. She had a double-double. And see, them the first two I brought up because, yeah. <laughs> you know, they pop out to me. And also they tenth grader, uh, the sophomore point guard. Oh, she, you talk about Jasmine, you know, as we like to call her, Sticky Fingers. Sticky Fingers. Jones, She's real yes. nice. Uh, they have a lot of hustle on that team. They well coach by a tandem, uh, a mother and a son. Never heard that before. Yeah, that's, that's the, first. the first. You know what I'm saying? And they holding it down for the South Barrow girls. Shout out Bulldogs. to Coach Ferguson. Yeah, Squared. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jasmine, she had 12 points. She had 10 steals, 6 assists, and 2 rebounds. 10 steals? That's why we call her Sticky Fingers. Yeah, the ball seems to find her yeah. every time. Every time. But shout out to South Broward. And, uh, you know, we would love to do any girls – Boys basketball game, so hit us up, let us know on section 104 Instagram or email us. Yeah, email us live from section 104 at Google. <laughs> so, yeah, man, you know, next thing you know, G, we definitely got to talk about what's going on and the people that's been moving around and the kids because you know, definitely the man, transfer portal man. they think it's just in, in, in college, man. It's it's different in high school. It's in high school. And I don't know if the transfer portal in high school hit anywhere else like it hit South Florida. Because it hit South Florida something like college. You know, the NCAA. A lot of kids moving. And not even only that, we got a lot of coaches that's also moving. Yeah. You know, coaching career says, you know, it's wild out there right now. But let's get into it, Chuck. So, you know, Yeah. Like he said, let's get into it, people, man. So, first on the list, biggest transfer of the offseason, Javari J-Rock from the Block Flowers. It's 2025 DB from Miami Central, transferred to Miami Northwestern in the West. Rivalry yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <sighs> That, that. I wish they could see really see your face right now. <laughs> I don't I'm, think they really they re, they really see it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's known that I'm a rocket. Okay. I'm a rocket fan, but I am you know I'm not biased. I, I give respect when respect due. Uh, to be honest with you, it's a great move for the young man in his future. I wish he could have stayed a rocket, graduated a rocket, but yeah, I really. I really don't have much to say about that, but just good luck. Good luck, Javari. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always going to have love for him. And, yeah, he's going to have on the blue and gold. And, I, yes, I will be rooting for him. He's still J-Rock from I'm the block. I'm still going to be you know? rooting for him. So It goes a little deeper than, you know, it's not just rock block. But yeah, that's you know? blood. That's blood. So he's different. Um, I, I, for, for me, I, yeah, I'm going to just leave it on what you said then, G, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel you, cause it's. I mean, 
it's, it's tough, you know. I mean, because you know, we we've been we've been doing the carousel with them for a while. This ain't the first time that somebody that transferred from Central to the West or somebody that transferred from the West to Central. Like this, it's happened before, but you know, I never been this close to the situation though. Yeah, honestly, so that's why it hits kind of a little different for me. But like I say, I'm always root for them, and I wish them the best. You know what I'm saying? So. To lose your top DB to your rival school, though, that's tough. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Well, we're going to go on to another tough one. They like to call this young man the, the central killer. The central killer? I said it out loud. Who was that? We were talking about Noah Sedan, kicker. Oh, wow. Yeah. Northern, 2026. Uh, transfer from Northern to Chaminade. Shamanah been getting them in. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, you say Javari was one of the biggest transfer portal moves. That was a big this year. one. It was a big one. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But uh, I mean, we haven't got to this kid yet. But Javari Brady from Monarch going to Shamanah. Yeah, he, he was, I think he's that's next right up, up there. He's next on the list, and right there with him is um, Zach Katz from True North, the quarterback. Yeah, so Shumana obviously making moves. Yeah. They obviously trying to keep that powerhouse status and look like they going for a natty this year. So shout out to Shumana, man, and doing a big one in recruiting. I ain't going to lie right now. That's like three, three players, four players. Yeah, that's already adding on to what they have. Pivotal spots, too. Yeah. Shout just out to Coach on. Jones, man. Just adding on. You know, they KK say it's there. reloading, but I don't really see it as reloading because, like you said, they, they got players that's there right now like that. That's why I said adding on. Yeah. You know. What we got next on the list? Next on the list, we got another kicker. You know, we got <laughs> Ethan Silver, you know, 2025, from Archbishop Coleman Carroll. Okay. He transferred to Miami Northwestern, the West. Now, that's another school yeah. that's making a lot of moves in the transfer portal, getting a lot of kids in. You know, uh, they doing their big one, too. Shout out to the West. Uh, that's most definitely going to help because always upgrading the special teams, always help a football team. You know, you got to win the three phases of the game. And, hey, they getting better there. I, I'm, we're, we might as well just keep it Northwestern themed then because, I mean, it, it was like a one school flop from Booker T to the West. Like, <laughs> I seen that. I don't know what's going on, you know. I would like to talk to all parties, you know, anybody from Booker T, you know, the young players that transfer, you know, y'all holler at us, you know. We'd love to talk to y'all. Y'all come on Section 104, you know. My boy the Joker. The, <laughs> Jamel Bonica, you know. That, that, that was one that really surprised me. Yeah. Because I, I didn't expect him to go anywhere, let alone the West. I didn't either, you know, 2026 DM, man. But, yeah, he, he went to the West, you know. We got another um, DM, C.J. Marcus from Booker T. He, he went to the West. Then you got a receiver, Tremari Dennis Jr., wide receiver, 2026 from Booker T. He went to the West. Then you go, I, I, I might <laughs> butcher his name. I'm sorry, little homie. Lion Team Belazaire. Okay. Okay. He's the D in 2026. He left from Booker T and went to the West. Man. So, um, so, yeah, what's going uh, on in the West? What's going on at Booker T? What you should be asking. I mean, those are two great questions we should be asking, <laughs> no? Uh, I just applauded Coach Ice and his staff, Coach Matt's them for – Running a tight ship over there, but right now it seems like they can't keep a player. I mean, I don't know what's going on internally, but man, that seems a little crazy to me. And I don't understand it because I know Coach Ice, you play for Coach Ice, you stay with Coach Ice. Yeah. You know, but the West, like I say, we know what's, we know what's going on over there. You know. What's going on? <laughs> that guy, Teddy. Teddy, um, Teddy. Yeah, we'll be talking about that a little bit later Teddy, on in the um, Teddy show. Coming. <laughs> Teddy, coming. Teddy coming in the show. That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, I mean, we could talk about another school. They they had a little man shipping as well. And there's a few of them. They went to New Orleans. What was that? Pace. So, you know, we got Sean Smith. He's a DN linebacker, 2025. He went from Pace to New Orleans. Then, you know, we got... Cole Rodriguez, 
He went for pace to Cardinal Gibbons. Mm. Then we got Isaiah Rock. He went from pace, 2025 athlete. He went from pace to Northern. So, so that's another question we should be asking. What's going on at Pace? But to be honest with you, I see that year in and year out at Pace. I mean, I don't think it's right. I wish it don't happen or never happen, but it happens where a lot of kids start to exit that program after they come in and get some experience uh, playing varsity ball or JV ball or whatnot for, for Pace, a great program. Yeah. We will get great education and great coaching. And they go on to other schools and do big things. So, you know, like I would say a Jeremiah Smith who just signed to uh, Ohio, Ohio State. State. Uh, JoJo Trader who also played on the team with Jeremiah Smith. That's going you to signed to UM. Uh, if Shamar Stewart, he actually stayed at Pace and graduated from Pace, but he went to Texas A&M. And I'm just thinking, like, if these kids stay at Pace, what will Pace be? What? Uh, shout out to DVD, man. Yeah, shout out to my boy DVD. Big DVD and the DVD. DVD. That's Demarcus Van Dyke and Demarcus <laughs> Van Dyke the third. <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah, that that's some things uh I, I would wonder, you know, if they could keep them kids at pace, we'll be talking about pace as a powerhouse in, in South Florida. It, yeah, maybe. I mean, there was also a kid there's another one that's left pace, but he went to Central. His name is Tyler Pitts. He's a cornerback, 2025. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Um, right now, I feel like Miami Central, with, with them losing a the DB, them adding one, that's good. You know, uh, they need to go ahead and make a little bit more moves for me as a fan. Mm. You know, for me, they need to make a little bit more moves in the transfer portal. But I know that. Coach Are you Drew, specifically looking for. Uh, uh, a position or a, a specific player? <laughs> yes and no. Okay. But you don't want to let it go, you don't want to let it out right now. No, it's not really that. Okay. Is it, is right now? I know we could get. I'm not gonna say any player, but we could get a good player. We could coach them up, put them in that system, and they'll be ready to go. So I know what Coach Ju, how Coach Ju is, and what he can do. Okay. Well, Coach Ice did get one so far. He got uh, O-lineman, D-lineman, Stanley Johnson, 2025 from Miami Jackson, transferring into uh, Booker T, F5. Yeah, it's always great when you upgrade the trenches. Always great. And we got Jaden Jackson, DB, 2027 from St. Brendan. He transferred to New Orleans. Okay, St. Brandon making a move out there. Northern yeah. making moves out there. Shout out to Coach Berg. Shout out to Coach Berg. And, you know, we got also, you know, Santi Guritz from Pace. 2027 quarterback. Mm. He transferred to Westminster. Mm. It's a great move. Yeah. It's a good move for him. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I know people still leaving Pace. I'm not saying it's a great move. A pace, but it's a great move for that kid. And then you got Cody Connors. He's a quarterback, 2027, transfer from St. Thomas to Cardinal Gibbons. And then you Cody got Gibbs Preston man, White, huh? quarterback, 2025, transfer from Ocala Trinity Christian to Cardinal Gibbons. Yeah. Cardinal Gibbons trying to upgrade for that Broward ball. You know, they – Won state a couple years ago, so they a powerhouse up there. They just trying to get back to prominence. And you know, we just got breaking all this information. You know, we got via the portal three or five sports, or you know, the crib South Florida. But you know, just then, Kobe Howard from Western just transferred to Shamanad. To Shamanad once again, making moves again. <sighs> they building up what they already had. So they adding on, putting them kids in that system, that system they already know is proven to work, and they just going to continue to roll on, coach. You can't ban Section 104. That's one thing you can't do. You can't ban us. So show us that you can't ban us. Show us your appreciation by being a Section 104 lifer, by coming.
get a Kank Band Section 104 shirt. Stay $25. $25. That ain't, that's, that's pretty cheap. Real cheap. But you can get it even for the low if you join our membership channel on YouTube. Yes, sir. <laughs> You'll actually get it for free. Forget the low. Five finger discount. So y'all make sure y'all run out right now to our page. Hit us up. Get you a Kank Band Session 104 t shirt. I got mine. Do you have yours? Yeah, okay. Talk about the state series. Okay. The state championships in the state of Florida. Shout out to St. Thomas for completing that. Five peat. <laughs> Drive for five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got that five peat. First time in the state of Florida that has been done by any team. So shout out to them. My boy, Old Dog, Coach Ali, the shout DC out to over old dog. there. You know what I'm saying? They took down. Our favorite one. Our Home favorite said, I'm, I'm not going to lie, old dog. I was going for the underdog, and you know, they took y'all to the wire. I mean, the score was 31 to 28. It was a tight one. Yeah, it was a tight one again. Well, I can't say again because last year St. Thomas kind of pulled away. But yeah, and honestly, to be real with you, I felt like if Homestead was going to beat St. Thomas, that this, this would have had to be yeah, the year. it was the year. This would have had it, to be the this year. This was the year. Yeah, St. Thomas God, just Jesus, still man. had too much, you know. Also, who won back-to-back state championships. Oh, shout-out to Columbus Explorers. Miami Columbus. Shout-out to them boys. Shout-out to that boy, Jose Leon Jr., man. Yes, sir. And, uh, he called it. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. If you look it. on 305 Sports, he called it. He said it early in the season. They was going to get back to back. And yeah. Nobody was going to beat them. And he say people were saying they was too slow. They not fast they enough. They said that. They, you know, they can't play with the big dogs. They said. Hey, they walked away with a victory. They did nobody they believed them, though, G. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, co- I mean, that quarterback. <sighs> Alberto yeah. Mendoza. Yeah, he 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 a dog. He like that. I he like him. him. He he's him. I, I like, like him. him. He's tough. He play tough. I mean, they whole family because his big brother also who plays for University of California right now. Yeah, also smart with the ball. Very tough. You know what I'm saying? Don't go down on the first hit. We'll fight for tough yards as a quarterback. So, shout out to Miami Columbus for winning back to back state championships. Shout out to them. Also, we got some more champions from the North. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, so when I mean the North, I'm talking about Broward County. I'm talking about. Okay, that's where you're going with it because I thought you was talking about further North. We ain't going there yet. Not oh, okay, yet. okay. Not my yet. bad, my Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm talking about them lines, them Chaminade lines from Hollywood. Nah, boys. Yes, sir. Hey, dominating fashion. Yeah, that, that, that was a three peat. That was 56 to nothing. Donuts on the boy. We owe them boys some donuts, huh, G? <laughs> y'all holla at G for y'all donuts, man. I mean, in a playoff, it wasn't no competition for, you know, no. they did that to everybody in yeah. the playoffs. So Pretty much was expected. Selling. Yeah, expected. Uh, shout out to Chaminade again. We knew what was going to happen. I, I'm not going to lie. Boy. I feel like they're, they're, they're my national champs. I don't know about you. I can give it to them, too. They deserve their rings. Because I feel like they go up against any team, they will either beat them or be a close loss. And I don't think they will lose because the way you got four. You got four. You got that, Uno, you got that, four, you got seven, and you got 11. Yeah. Put it on their back, and they'll get it done for you. You, you can't forget zero on defense. He's a game yeah, changer. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. But I was just saying he flips the, the, like, the ball. He flips the field on defense and special teams. Yeah, shout out Zaquan Patterson, you know, the you. You, you had to throw that in there, huh? Hey, it is what it is. Respect, respect. <laughs> but we also had a team to go up there to Tallahassee, Chuck. And uh, they was the only ones oh, that didn't man. come back home with the victory. But shout out to them for getting there. Undefeated season. You know. Miami Northern they Vikings. Ju- yeah, Miami Northern shout Vikings. Out to shout out to man. them and Coach Bird. But they just couldn't bring home the championship. Which I was going for, y'all. And I, I anticipated a victory. But Berkeley Prep had something else to say about that. Right. Got their first one in school history. Yeah, actually, that was their first win. So, how, how how do you feel about that game? Like, watching that game and your thoughts after that game? Because we just heard about your thoughts going into that game. So, what about after? 
Um, mental mistakes, you know. Um, honestly, I didn't really agree with the first play of the game with the, the double pass. Right. Um, I haven't seen Nate throw the ball all year. That's just me, and I've watched him a few games. But, hey, maybe, you know, it's last game of the season, you know, just throwing everything I seen in the playbook. Right. I don't know. Could be wrong. But can't hold nothing back. Last game of the season. No. Um Chino <laughs> right. EJ Poole, you run. Then we hey. Nine, go get the ball. Spot um screen, bubble, ten. Yeah. Quick right yeah. now. No? To me, uh you right. But to me, uh Norland had a lot of mistakes, a lot of turnovers. Uh, I never seen a defense play that bad, that bad all season. Yeah, um, I they, mean, but they did have a pick six that was called back, you know, due to blocking right, in the back. But that's that's one phase of it. But it was they couldn't tackle at all. They could not stop the run. Um, they knew the quarterback really couldn't throw the ball, but somehow, some way, he was finding guys that was open. I mean, they were switching up. I mean, they had an athlete playing quarterback, too. I mean, three did it all. It just really seemed. He kind of even threw it to himself one time. Did you see it? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Because <laughs> he was all over the field. Yeah. I mean, honestly, one guy really beat them. To me, two guys. Two, two. Two guys really beat them, number three. And, and 76. You got to throw him in there, too, because yeah, he was playing yeah, he, both ways yeah. in the trenches, though. And also, you know, they, they D lineman, he showed up right before the half. Yeah. The first half, he was getting sacked after sack on EJ. But it was tough, man. And uh, I don't know if Norland was overlooking them boys. Their defense showed, most definitely didn't play up the part. But hey, shout out to them for making it. But I mean, they made it tight. I mean, it's 28 to 20. They, they had a chance. Yeah, but ultimately you couldn't bring it home. So, like I say, shout out to them for making it. And hopefully next year, you know, they could get back to the spot, to that spot. But this time bring home the championship because I really believe in Coach Poole. I really believe in Coach Keon and Coach Bird and them. They did get the job done. Shout out to them. I mean, shout out to Northern. I mean, they, they did win out in the city. Yeah. They, they beat most of the inner city schools. They went undefeated. Yeah. But, I mean, with next year's new classifications, y'all can check that out on the page. I mean, hopefully those new um, schedules, we still get those same, you know, schools that we like to see. Some of those old rivalries um, renewed. Some of those um, schools are back in the same classification again. So, you well, know. I tell you this, you know one rivalry that's not going to go nowhere, regardless of what classification, what district they in, what state they in. I don't care. They could be in different states. That Miami Central and Northwestern rivalry going to always be there. Greatest somewhere. rivalry in the world. And we don't have to worry about that. I'm sitting there, Formula 7 Studios. Ooh. Yes, sir. You got a podcast you want to shoot. You got some music you want to get on the mic and drop. You got a movie or a video you want to shoot. Man, this is the place you want to be. I think I might do it all. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all go check them out, man. Chuck, let them know where you can catch them at. Hey, man, they located at 1235 Northwest 103rd Street, Miami, Florida, 33130. Yes, you sir. can check them out on Instagram, man. Y'all following them. Y'all make sure y'all let them know Section 104 sent you. You get a $50 off if you let them know Section 104 sent you. Remember, that's Formula 7. Studios on Instagram. Check them out. Yeah, man. It's been other things that also happened other than the state series at the end of the high school season this year, which pertains to uh, Section 104. Uh, yeah, I mean... Basically, we got some a cease and desist letter. The round right before the play, right before the state, you know, stating that we cannot and we should not go live at the games because Section 104 is selling game film. Yeah, and, and we're taking money from the schools. Right. Also, we're taking money from the schools, which is fabricated. It's not true. Yeah. You know, uh, no one has came and talked to us before this cease and desist letter was sent out. So, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of unknowns right now. But Section 104, we do apologize, you know, for 
you know, not being there and not giving you guys what you want. But it wasn't on us. Right. It wasn't on us, but we're going to apologize for the powers that be. But we got something working out, don't we, G? Yeah, something will be worked out. Something we will come to agreement and we will see how this will work out moving forward with Session 104. We definitely trying to come back, Dade County, man. We ain't forgot about y'all, but you know. Right. So Right now we in Broward. Yeah, so if you see us moving in Broward a lot, now you know why. Yeah. But always, and remember to subscribe to Session 104 yeah. on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. What else, Chuck? Just search Section 104. And then while you're on YouTube, make sure you know you join our membership channel because when you join the membership channel, you'll get a free Section 104 shirt like you see up here in the yes, front. sir. Can't ban Section 104. We got four levels, you know. We got the ELE level. That's at, you know, you'll see whatever the price is. You got the long live four level. We got the 104 gold level. And we got the 104 platinum level. So, you know, you go on the membership channel and you check out which one that you, you know, whichever one fits you, you know. I think that platinum level may be the one for That's me. the one that fits you? <laughs> <laughs> that may be the one that fit me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Session 104 is 2024. We're going to be coming up. It's going to Big year in 2024 for yeah. Session 104. Best believe that we coming. I, mean, I ain't trying to sound like Dion, but we coming hard. You ain't trying to sound or look like Dion, are you? <laughs> prime time. Shout out to Prime time. This guy. Yeah. Session 104 in the building. This is the podcast. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Stay locked in for more high school, youth sports. Hey, y'all know what it is. It's Section 104. Remember, it's ELE.